Okay, thank you very much, uh, everyone. I'm the president of a society named the Best Advance, located in Rimini. Uh, which one with my colleagues, Elena Vani, who is here with me, and uh, she is the very uh, owner of this project, but she said, Mauricio, please speak you, because uh, thank you, Elena. Uh, we are engaged uh, till uh, 2005 uh, with the CSR Manager Network. Uh, I divide my presentation in three parts. A short presentation of CSR Manager Network, because it's the reason we are here. The second one, the central one, is uh, some methodologies about marketing and CSR in enterprises and organizations. The third one is about the case history. I spoke this one minute ago. And then some final issues uh, about the appliance and so on. Uh, CSR Manager Network is a network of professionals established in uh, uh, Università Cattolica in Milan till uh, 2005. Uh, it's engaged uh, to manage substantial, uh, subst excuse me, sustainability activities into all the kind of organization. Uh, we want to promote the sense of responsibility as a way to manage enterprise and organization. Not responsibility as a uh, logo, as a, a trademark, and so on, but responsibility as a global way to manage the enterprises and the organization in general. We have uh, four goals to promote the professional development of all the associates, to promote the profession of the CSR managers into organizations in general, to promote the policy of sustainability in all the kind of organization, and to create international interactions between all the people interested in these topics, etc. We uh, involve uh, every time or every type of organization from uh, small enterprises to corporate foundations to large firms and so on. You know, in Italy, it's, it's a matter that I will uh, reprise uh, in some minutes. In Italy, we are 92% uh, of SME, the small and medium enterprises. So we are really interested in promote this culture even in the uh, small and medium enterprises. We have even a program about young people to create engagement about this uh, topic. Um, this is the composition at June uh, of this year of our organization. The activities are cultural, are consultancy, are conferences, uh, working group, and so on. A, a large number of activities for our uh, network. This is uh, the composition of the board, a lot of great uh, uh, organization from Bulgari to Hanel to Diadora and so on. And uh, the scientific committee who uh, is held by Mario Molteni, professor of corporate strategy in Milan, and then other uh, distinguished people with great engagement in this uh, argument. We are representative to European institutions of our activities, and we had the communication with the role of credit the network, consolidate what we are doing, and so on. At the end of this uh, uh, presentation of the network, we want to focus on the, the methodological part of my uh, speech. Uh, we think that it's the moment to be very clear. Or we introduce the corporate social responsibility in the way to manage in a large vision our activities. Or perhaps it could be uh, have no great future. So for us, the first thing is to have a clear common vision of what sustainability is. And, uh, the idea to take the United Nations Global Goals, the 17 goals about uh, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, and so on, it's a manifesto 
with uh, the real base of a great effort that we have to do all together. It's not possible to speak about sustainability if all of us have a different vision of sustainability itself. We have to have a common goal, a common uh, vision of what sustainability could be. And these uh, 17 topics created by the United Nations uh, are the real foundation of a common vision about what we are doing in sustainability. Okay. Starting from uh, this point, our idea is that CSR is a condition to manage an, an organization in a complete and holistic way. So if we are taking the 17 goals and we assume in our vision that sustainability is a main road, we have to create a global and common vision to all the members of the organization and the enterprise. It's not a question of marketing, you know? I, I'm speaking about marketing because I'm saying it's not a question of marketing alone. It's a question of all the organization that must be completely involved in a holistic way. So all the things are in the same sphere, in the same uh, cloud of ideas and so on. This means putting values, putting values in action. It's not possible to have a CSR policy if you don't have a clear statement about your values in your organization. It's fundamental. I see a lot of enterprises and organizations in Italy, uh, and perhaps even in Europe, that as an idea or that as a, a marketing advertising about their sustainability, but they don't have clear value. And this is not possible. You have to put values in action to have a sustainability, a real strategic policy. The second one, people really first. I'm really tired about the fact that a lot of entrepreneurs, of managers say, oh, people are our first resource and so on, but the policy about people and education are really poor. It's not possible. We have to create engagement about people in a real way. You know the joke about the fact that the two managers are discussing and the, the first said, okay, but what we are doing? We invest in people and if they leave and the others say, okay, but if we don't invest, they stay. It's the same. It's, the, it's worse because we have not educated people. It is not possible. Education is one of the 17 goals we put in the uh, statement before. The other side is customer really at the center. The sustainability policy fail when the customer is not at the center of the vision. It's not possible to have sustainability policies without putting the customer in the center of our mind. It's uh, impossible. A lot of people are not in a good phase with this statement because, you know, especially in Italy, <coughs> we, are, we seem really uh, uh, little involved in uh, uh, customer uh, thoughts. In Italy, we invest only the 5% of what the enterprise invests in Germany for uh, market research about customers, 5%. Our economy is the half of the German one, and we invest only 5% in asking the customers what they feel, what they do, and so on. Uh, it's not possible that we continue in this way. So, customer really at the center is one, and another clear statement. The other is to consider very well suppliers, business customers, and the other stakeholders in your flow. Uh, the difference is between the complete engagement 
and a sort of uh, poor statement. It's not possible. You have to consider everyone. And the, five, the fifth point is the fight to inequalities. I spoke uh, some minutes uh, with a new friend some minutes ago, and uh, we said, OK, about coffee, it's not possible that we speak about sustainability and the price we are giving to the producer is less than 1% of the final price on the shelf. It's not possible. Inequality must be fighted. In all the food chain, we have to assure a good uh, situation for all the uh, people involved in the chain, starting from the producer, of course. I put on the way six rules. This is my, my and of Ellen and my manifesto that we want to leave to the Trieste campus as heritage. The first one, we start from global policy. Clear statements. Don't be uh, vague, don't be uh, weak about this statement. Clear statement about global policy. The second one is the raw material producer must be protected. At the moment, they are the weakest part of the chain. It's not possible. The third one is the transparency of the processes. This is another focus. The fourth is the logistics. The logistics has to be better for the environment. It's not possible that we are in a sustainability policy, but our logistics, oh, there are something, there are someone external who is involved in logistics, it's not my problem. No, it's your problem. And we must be very clear about it. The corporate communication must pursue the effective uh, commitment, so very honest communication about real values, and the constant involving activities with customers. These are the six rules to can identify if your marketing policies about CSR is uh, correct. I uh, defined this sort of uh, image. I can uh, listen to my friend in the last row, if you can read it, but I suppose not. And so I go and illustrate this uh, image. In these six rules, we start from uh, this position. The global policy is made by brand perception, customer input, and uh, a constant SWOT analysis about our policies. The second one about producers and uh, uh, environment Efficiency and service are the focus. The third is about processes. They have to be strong in credibility in our uh, general strategy. Logistics. Logistics start from organizing information technology, organizing schedule, and set up an application strategy in logistics. Communication. Involve outside agencies in your policies, resources and skill inside the company about CSR, and the responsibility and structures. And the last one is about customer. Customer satisfaction surveys. The discussion of the survey inside of the company. Another thing that we see in the weak policies if, is that even if you are going to do a, a company, an organization is going to do customer satisfaction surveys and so on, but they remain property of quality insurance, of someone in marketing intelligence and so on, as they are not discussed with all the guys in the enterprises. It's not good. It's fundamental that all the evidence of the surveys will be discussed into uh, the whole organization of a company, of a firm, and so on. And then defining a monitoring of process and actions. Uh, there are, are there some uh, uh, models in business that could be useful for uh, managing uh, 
sustainability. Uh, one of uh, these models is the five forces analysis by Michael Porter. We use this uh, uh, old but uh, strong uh, model to evaluate how the enterprises in a certain field is doing with sustainability. There is a focus about the competition, the direct rivalry and so on, but we consider even the new competitors, uh, we consider the customers, the substitute products and the suppliers as part of the competitive uh, arena in which we will define how the CSR marketing policies could be uh, involved and evolved. So we say that uh, to be a good professional in a CSR marketing way uh, must involve increasing the responsibility and the business competitiveness of your activity and uh, contribute to a sustainable development at every level. In specific, to define a clear CSR roadmap. I, I listened to Corina's explanations about uh, KPIs and so on. So we have to be very clear with our roadmap, with the defining of, the defining of a stronger KPI model and the use, the use of a, a evolved management technique to be very easy in process. We use agile management system to be very active in our uh, policies and so on. This is, I, I can't pretend that you can read every uh, row, you know, but uh, uh, this is a sort of a, a new possibility. This is in Italian. I, I had not the time to translate it, but um, for Coop, Coop Supermarket, which is the, the, leaders, the leader in Italy, and uh, this is the impact on a natural resource and uh, the social responsibility. KPI is uh, key performance indicators. Uh, Indicatori chiave di performance. Okay. Uh, so uh, you see this. I, I make a, just an example. I, I'm a sort of a, a teacher, so just a, a little topic in method. Yes, I have time. To do. Okay. We have a direct impact on natural resources. The main topic is raw materials. The the OKR is objective and key result is about. Uh, to have the 50% of uh, biocompatibility of materials in, uh, for instance, uh, detergents and so on. And the KPI it is to substitute the 75% of the producer of normal detergents with uh, detergents with uh, packaging which is compatible uh, and so on. No? The KPI has to be me measured, so you have to define it in a very specific way when you uh, put it in, into your attitude. But this is an example of what a, a sort, what a list of uh, topics you could produce only thinking to these two issues. The most detailed you can be, the most powerful powerful will be your policy and your application, your execution, because it's not a problem of only of a policy, but the problem of execution. The, the other great question that we in a marketing vision have to control is the evolution, the innovation, and so we can't avoid to speak about blockchain. The, the last number of an Italian magazine in food claims in the cover about blockchain and there is an application in coffee. And you know, when blockchain gives the uh, firm the possibility to track everything and the customer to control everything which, which is tracked, it, it's a real change. And if you are not sustainable, these things 
will go up with will grow <coughs> excuse me and this will be a problem there is an example of Carrefour a great leader uh, in the world in supermarket that decided to uh, manage everything about the blockchain uh, policy the, the last part of the methodology uh, scheme is about which is the idea to manage this even for our uh, top management level and so on because they say okay we are we have to invest in the corporate social responsibility but which is the return we have the normal question that the CEO uh, put on the table if he or she is not so convinced about the policy is on this uh, topic. And so we create uh, a sort of CSR ROI. We, we were uh, among the first to introduce the marketing ROI in Italian market. And uh, uh, we think that CSR ROI is the key. CSI ROI is the result of classical marketing ROI plus the impact of SAV, social added values. So you know what is ROI, or I have to explain? ROI is a return of investment. It's the ratio between the results that you have normally in the final countdown of your firm or your organization, and the investments you made to create this opportunity. The marketing ROI is a specific application um, there is a book of me about uh, this in a chapter. Uh, I have re-edited it uh, just uh, some days ago. And uh, the formula is the, the margins that we have with a, a, a marketing policy, less the cost that we have to produce the, uh, these uh, uh, added margins, divided by the cost we use. So it's a sort of analysis of the result of the market investment. In a way of CSR, you have to create your marketing ROI. So you are uh, advertising uh, uh, about your food chain, uh, uh, the clear food chain you have and so on. The advertising is about uh, uh, 1 million euros. You have new sales for 2 million euros. And so, uh, in this way, if your sales is about 50% margin, you know it's 1 million euros of margin. And uh, you have 1 million euros of margin and 1 million euros of expenses, you're, you are at the same level between uh, margin, added margin and expenses. Uh, in this way, I add the social impact. For instance, uh, some... Uh, uh, improvement in the activity of the producers. Uh, a, a strongest uh, advertising for your suppliers and so on. It's a formula that we have to adapt to every market. It's a general concept. We have to adapt to food uh, uh, chain in coffee or chocolate or cocoa and so on. But this is a, an important topic because we can produce some statement that will aid us to give an information about the uh, return of the CSR investment. What happens in, uh, uh, in the real life? Uh, in the real life happens something like this. I present you under the permission of the Italian country manager of the gourmet division the case of Barica Lebout. You know, all of us will speak Barica Lebo, but they are from Belgium and they say Barica Lebout. So I, I learned it, so I, I you know I explain it to you because it's important. The right pronunciation is important. Barica Lebout is the most important firm in the world about the trading of cocoa. Uh, they promote their vision forever chocolate uh, and they say this is our plan to make sustainable chocolate the norm. 
they are very, very engaged about it. Uh, we have the pleasure to collaborate with Barrica Lebout in Italy, and they are really a, 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 an important firm even in this activity. Forever Chocolate is a, a, a statement to promote a movement to make sustainable chocolate the norm so that the chocolate we love will be around for generations to come. So it's not short term, it's really long, long term vision. They are driving a movement into prospering farmers uh, by 2025. Uh, they will put half a million, half a million of cocoa farmers out of poverty. You know, you remember, it's the first goal of United Nations. It's clear, it's really important. The second one, zero child labor. By 2025, they will eradicate the child labor from the supply chain. They are going to invest because, you know, they are really great uh, practices all over the world, but they could be in every moment, in every phase and so on. But they have said, okay, if you don't uh, put this into action, you will be out of our chain. Uh, the third one is thriving nature. What about? Uh, thriving nature is uh, by 2025 will be carbon and forest positive. Then, then we, just a little uh, remembering, I don't know if someone of you said the marvelous film The Corporation made in uh, 2001 in the United States. In that movie, uh, Ray Anderson, the uh, founder and CEO of Interface, went to uh, the uh, Confindustria, the, the industrial uh, syndicate in USA, and a general convention, he said, guys, we broke up our environment. We have to stop it. We have to change all our policies. I will change everything. My firm will be uh, positive to nature by 2020. You can see a lot of uh, Anderson's speech in TED. You know TED platform about the real innovators and so on. And uh, it was really really passionate, really charming. Unfortunately, he died some years ago, but in 2015, the interface uh, was really nature compatible. So the idea of Barrickle about is carbon and forest positive. Creating opportunity. If I put away from nature 100, I redone to... Uh, nature 101, 102, okay? This is real, uh, in a food chain like this, an important statement. The fourth is sustainable chocolate. Chocolate is not made only by cocoa. It's made by milk, sugar, and so on. Different composition, a real fantastic culture. And they say, okay, not only cocoa, but all the uh, ingredients in our product will be sustainable. So it's a, a really important process. The policy is uh, defined into activities. And so the first one, prospering farmers, is about increasing uh, farm productivity aiding the producer to increase in farm productivity and then increasing their income. The first one. The second one, to uh, educate about a replanting model. A replanting model, useful for nature, but useful for production. They are going with intercropping to improve soil condition and uh, create additional source of income. So not leaving 
it uh, to uh, wait for another cocoa cultivation, but intercropping. So the, the natural uh, soil and so on will produce for our activities. And the other is providing professional coaching, quality agricultural inputs and so on to create uh, the farming, the farm service business. They create the business services to aid the farmers to improve their activities. It's uh, fantastic. The second one is about zero child labor. And so they are mapping the supply chain. They are understanding the bad techniques to prevent the case of child labor. They uh, are creating an additional pilots and partnership, access to education for, for children, and uh, the women empowerment programs. This is the most important one, because improving the empowerment of the women, you will have all the effect about the uh, child and children policies. What about the carbon and forest positive? Okay, this is uh, the normal uh, carbon footprint they uh, defined. Uh, I, I, you could have these, uh, you could see this in the website and so on. The policies I, are about uh, reducing all the impacts uh, in nature of their activities, uh, being 100% deforestation free, Increase efficiency of factories and optimization of transport. You remember, I speak about logistics some months ago. Preference to ingredient suppliers that reduce the impact of the climate. And on farm intervention to look carbon in soil and plant. This is a, an important set of policies. Really important. I could see that even in coffee you could translate them, no? and the sustainable ingredients in all the products, develop roadmaps so the roadmaps are coming back. I, I spoke about roadmaps 10 minutes ago. For each raw material in the rich region, work with the certification and develop the programs where necessary, expand the sourcing capability via bio lands. Uh, uh, you can say about bio lands, the, the, the land of biocompatibility, bio it's another country, we can speak about it, but... And the Cocoa Horizon program, a program about the horizon of the region, Honduras or Guatemala or Ethiopia and so on. They are defining all of these policies, saying that... Uh, uh, you have to put this focus into your state of mind. You said, uh, ever thought about where your chocolate comes from? You as a customer, you as a business partner, they, they have a wonderful program. I, I was engaged in, uh, uh, I, me and my team were engaged in a, a marketing activity to communicate their top program, which is called Or Noir. If you want, you can see it in the website. Or Noir is a program by which the uh, shop of uh, uh, chocolate could uh, have uh, uh, its own chocolate with uh, uh, its label and so on. They have a lot of business-to-business uh, -business customers. And they say, even to business-to-business -business partners, have you thought about where your chocolates come from or not? It's a matter of choice, but it's a matter of strategical choice, not a matter of generic choice and so on. So you have to say these topics, and furthermore, other ones, you could have in mind other topics, that you could use to define this policy. The approaching is about uh, increasing productivity, professionalism, and diversification of income, and uh, to uh, lowering deforestation and increasing accountability, because we have, uh, what about KPI and so on? 
you have to be very strong, very tough about accountability and carbon sequestration. So this is the pilot structure. I don't, be, I don't want to be in details because it could be very uh, specific, but uh, cocoa productivity, farm diversification, good carbon practice, women income generation, women income generation, uh, fight against the child labor and education intervention are all in this fantastic will. This is the will of our thoughts, the will of sustainability. This is a map of the sustainable product and the map of sustainable ingredients that are defining and so on. You can calculate the carbon footprint. Of the so they give us the instruments to evaluate the focus of the policy and so on. And then the customers that have to be involved. Nothing to say more. This is the matter. The customer has to be involved. I spoke about coffee. When we go uh, near the shelf of the supermarket and we see the constant offer of half a kilo, in Italian way, of coffee at 2.99, we say, OK, we take this. But with half a kilo at 2.99, with all the process, which is the part that remains to the producers, nothing. We have to create culture about this. And so the customer must be involved in this uh, activity. The Cocoa Horizon, I uh, pronounced before, is the uh, scaling impact and driving chase mood that they are putting to evolve in this way. Cocoa Horizons helping to eradicate extreme poverty in Cocoa communities where the foundation works. The mission, I want to read it, is to improve the livelihood of cocoa farmers and their communities through sustainable entrepreneurial farming, improved productivity and community development. And this is very, very clear. You could uh, introduce a uh, principle about traceability, transparency, verification, and so on. The premium breakdown is about the real changing uh, division of the income between the actors in the field. The idea, because uh, Cocoa Chronicles is uh, to improve the taste, the quality, the health, the goodness, and the trust in this activity. So it's a global idea made by great values, a strong commitment, a strong uh, knowledge of all the chain activity. These are the the work they made in this period and so on. Okay. If you want, you can join this movement. First, in a mind way, in a state of mind way, you will have to define it. I want to uh, close my speech, and I thank you for your uh, wonderful attention to this, with four topics. In general, CSR should be seen as an opportunity because CSR is a value strategy that aligns the value created for shareholders, the social impact, and the protection of the environment. It creates values. It's not only about distributing value in different ways. We have to be convinced that the CSR management way creates values. This is fundamental. The second one is the companies looking to the future must define solutions to align and integrate social impact and social value with shareholder value and business impact. This is the, the vision. You remember the six rules I put first, before, excuse me. This is about this. Uh, CSR is a way to manage an enterprise. Not advertising, not only advertising. Advertising is the smallest part of all the process. Uh, we know that stakeholders' expectations toward business have increased in the last years, 
but they expect the business to create social value and protect the environment. Companies that do not need this expectation are exposed to higher cost and long-term risks. Uh, if in the 90s we could have 80% of the companies uh, uh, that even in a specific way uh, could be not interested in this 8 or 90% in this moment and uh, looking at the next uh, 10 years, 2025, uh, this is not possible. You know, if you don't know, I say it to you, that uh, the uh, World Economic Forum stated one month ago that by 2025, the same uh, perspective, the same horizon of uh, uh, Barical About Goals, uh, we will lost 80 million workplaces uh, caused by Robotica, but we will gain 120 million new working places, perhaps in a knowledge uh, management way. Uh, the knowledge management, the knowledge economy is real connected to the sustainable one. Because the most we understand, the most we see, the, the more we understand, the more we see that it's not possible that we are uh, using all the natural resourcing of this year and the end of July. We have to be back. We have to go back from this part. So we have to need this expectation to be not exposed, even for a uh, survival, to be not exposed to higher cost and risk. And uh, finally, investors who integrate this factor into the, invest uh, the investment choices are aware of this. Uh, BlackRock, for example, is disinvesting from companies that do not comply with the stringent social responsibility standards. And even when investment funds, we, know, we all, of us, all of us know, which is the role of investment funds in the crisis of last decade. Really important. But if we are uh, aware that we have to change their perspective, uh, it's a clear statement about the, the fact that our future is uh, to manage with sustainability in a real good way. Uh, we have to uh, protect social impact and uh, our environment because this is going to create real true value. Thank you very much.